John, can you remember the first broadcast you ever made? I can indeed. It was uh, in 1924 in a studio in Savoy Hill. I can, in fact, remember the actual announcement I was supposed to make, because I know I was supposed to say that the 2LO trio will now play L'Enfantine by Lardelle. I didn't say it. I don't know what I said, because the regular announcer, John Dodgson, was rolling about on the sofa with laughter, because I must have got it hopelessly muddled. It was in Savoy Hill on December the 11th, 19... 24. A long, long time ago. Now, oh, what kind of techniques, what kind of microphones were you using then? I mean, we're sitting here now, you with, with this microphone yeah. here in front of you, me with a tiny thing stuck in my tie here. Yeah. What, what were you using then? Uh, it was known as the meat safe. It was on four um, mahogany legs. You wheeled it about the studio. It had a great blue silk, brass-bound blue silk cover about two feet long and, uh, and about one foot wide. And uh, you sat or stood in front of this thing. It had a whacking red magnet on it. If you got your, your watch near it, of course, it paralyzed the watch. And it had a horrible habit of squeaking as you wheeled it about the studio. The engineers used to come in sometimes with an oil can and, and um, squeak the wheels, uh, oil the wheels, so they didn't squeak. And, of course, at that time, you want to play a gramophone record. You wound up by clockwork a gramophone with a horn on it, and you push this up to the microphone, and then you put on the gramophone record with a fibre needle, as it was then, or a steel needle, and played the gramophone records into the microphone. But after that, of course, you saw fairly rapid progress, didn't oh, yes. you? I mean, what was the next kind of mic you used? I think the next one, which was uh, much more fun, was the rice microphone, which was a sort of octagonal, rather like marble, with a black face to it. And this was a carbon microphone, as they call it. I don't know anything about technicalities at all, but all I know about the, the rice microphone was that being carbon, it used to pack, as they called it occasionally, and in the middle of a broadcast, a sudden distortion would happen, and an engineer would come in and give it a smart kick or a smart smack to unpack the crystals, uh, the uh, carbon, so that uh, it came normal again. We've and these were hung up in front of you. We've been known to give our television monitors a sharp <laughs> smack, I can tell you, even today. <laughs> and after that? What was after that, I think we came to the moving coil. And this was a, a sort of bronze-coloured round, quite small, only about three or four inches across. And this was a much more... Uh, easier thing to use because it didn't pack, it was smaller, uh, and at least it, uh, it was a microphone that was directional, uh, and you can in fact use it, but not by hand. They did in fact use one or two by hand, I think, eventually. But again, it had no protection from outside noises, so that at this time, every time you did a boxing match or a football match, you had to install a great green hut uh, in box by a boxing ring or at uh, Twickenham. They were still built, and at Wimbledon and so on, you had to have these greenhouses to shut out the extra noise. And I remember in 1932, when we were doing the great um, uh, New Zealand-England um, match with Obolensky scored his famous tries, that the recording will show now the noise that came over the microphone by people who were hammering with their feet and sticks and so on, just above you. And all this hammering came through, and Teddy Wakeham doing the commentary was inaudible. Well, using this kind of equipment, how on earth did you record the boat race? Well, this was done... Uh, the first thing that happened was that when we first did the boat race in 1927, I was not concerned with that one, a listener wrote and suggested he knew exactly how we should do it. We should have a cable, which we would pay out. The letter is still in Broadcasting House. We should pay out a cable from a drum on a launch following the two crews, uh, and that to keep constant uh, connection between the microphone and the cable, which would be revolving, he suggested that a brass wheel should revolve in a bath of mercury. Was this for your uh, listener's name, Heath Robinson, by any well, Almost that, Heath Robinson, but it had to be pointed out to him to have a cable for four and a quarter miles to carry the thing, we'd want a launch of about 250 tonnes. However, Kirk at that time, who was the head of um, the research department, uh, did have what was laughingly known as a portable transmitter. And this involved a mass of batteries weighing about a hundred weight and a small generator on board which would transmit the uh, uh, microphone signals to receiving stations posted over the course. And uh, when I first did it in 1931, there was no communication, no two-way communication with the shore at all. All I would do was to clock, uh, set my watch by a telephone message to Broadcasting House on a stopwatch, and on the given moment say 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever it was, I would go ahead. We had no knowledge on the launch as to whether it was going to be heard at all by anybody. It was, in fact, going out to the listener. Was, we knew it was going out from the launch, but where it went to after that, we didn't know. You were not aware whether anybody could no. hear you or not. There no, no signals from the bank? Or uh, we got a signal from the bank as we got up to Harrods, just short of uh, Hammersmith Bridge, when the receiving station was on the roof of Harrods, and an engineer would come out, and he would wave a white handkerchief, which meant 
I'm getting you all right. Did I hear you all right that you said that was back in 1931 that yes. you first did a boat race? Yes. What a long time ago. Can I just lean over and see if we can have a look at your tie? Do you mind? Because no, that looks to me like some kind of microphone, is it? It's, uh, it is the rice microphone. It's a sort of um, symbol of the rice microphone, which is, I'm glad to say I'm rather proud of it. It's only allowed to, for people to wear it by those who worked in Savoy Hill before we moved to Broadcasting House. You should be very proud indeed. I am indeed. John Snag, thank <laughs> you.